Hey, Vision Chasers. You know, a lot of people are shocked and disgusted by a lesson that I did about a book called The Jungle that came out in 1906. And the things that were uncovered in this book in the meatpacking industry. And because of these things that were uncovered, eventually there would be legislation that would come down that would provide oversight for the meatpacking industry to ensure that people weren't getting sick or even dying because of the food that was being sold to them. Now, definitely this book was, was groundbreaking. It was huge towards getting that push for this eventual oversight. But there was something else that happened not too long before this incident in 1906 because in 1898 there was another issue in regards to food that was being provided to the public and it involved our soldiers. Today we're going to talk about the embalmed beef scandal of 1898. President William McKinley was not too anxious to get involved in the fight that was taking place in Cuba. Now, Cuba is not too far away from the United States and Cuba was a colonial territory of Spain and Cuba had had enough. They wanted their independence from Spain. And what made things a little tricky for the president is the fact that there were U.S. businessmen who had interests in Cuba and they wanted their business interests protected. And this protection would involve the United States military. Additionally, the media would help to make up the president's mind and sway the public towards getting involved in this war. Now, in order to prepare for this war, McKinley called for over 100,000 soldiers, volunteer soldiers to enlist in the military. Now, things are happening pretty fast and you can imagine that as you're trying to prepare for this war, it's going to cause some strain on the supply line because Yes, you're going to need these soldiers, but these soldiers, they're also going to need supplies. They're going to need ammunition. They're going to need weapons. They're going to need food and all kinds of other resources in order to successfully fight this war. And as a result, corners were cut. Now, according to the VA, about 385 soldiers died in this war and over 1600 soldiers were wounded. But in the aftermath of this war, people were horrified to learn about how the soldiers were actually were treated by the United States government and the leaders in the military. And what shocked the public most of all was the fact that soldiers were provided with meat that was uh, very poor quality, was spoiled or highly preserved with chemicals that could lead to sickness and death. Now this prompted President McKinley to create the Dodge Commission. Now the Dodge Commission was a group of people led by General Greenville Dodge and their responsibility was to basically get to the bottom of these allegations of poor treatment of the soldiers during this war. And as you can imagine, they talked to a lot of people who were there to get their account for what exactly happened. And I'm going to share with you some of the information that they gathered throughout the duration of their investigation. Now, this is testimony from a gentleman. His title is he's a doctor and he's a major and he is the chief surgeon and this testimony is dated September 21st, 1898 to this commission. And this is what he stated. He said in the several inspections I made in the various camps and troop ships at Tampa, Jacksonville, Chickamauga and Puerto Rico, I found the fresh beef to be apparently preserved with secret chemicals, which destroy its natural flavor and which I also believe to be detrimental to the health of the troops. He, let, he goes on to say, it is impossible to keep fresh beef so long, untainted in the sun, in that climate, 
without the use of deleterious preservatives such as boric acid, salicylic acid, or nitrate potash injected into it in quantities liable to be hurtful to the health of the consumer. So let me stop right there. I'm going to read you a little bit more of his testimony, but I want to set this up. So understand that he is inspecting this meat because this meat is going to be provided to soldiers who are training and they're preparing to be shipped out to go fight in this war. So they're training in the southern part of the United States, and that's where the, the meat is going. And eventually meat is going to be sent to them, as he said before, in Puerto Rico. So this meat is being provided to the soldiers by companies in the united states and he is a major in the military and he's also a doctor so he knows he would know what he was talking about when he talks about chemicals and potentially being hurtful to the human body okay so he goes on to say when detailed to take charge of the transport Panama, that's a ship, for conveying convalescence to the United States, I obtained 2,000 pounds of fresh beef from the commissary. It looked well, but had an odor similar to that of a dead human body. After being injected with preservatives, and it tasted when first cooked, like decomposed boric acid, while after standing a day for further inspection, it became so bitter, nauseous, and unpalatable as to be quite impossible for use. So once again, this is a doctor. He knows what it's what a, a dead body smells like when it's been injected with preservatives or embalmed or embalmed, he knows what that smells like. Now, a quick side note, the food, a lot of the food that we eat today has preservatives in it. Now, the difference between uh, now and then is that we've got more government oversight over the, the food that we eat. Companies, they can be held liable if they you know provide the public with food that is potentially dangerous. Now, definitely, there are people who will argue that all preservatives are bad. I acknowledge that. But just know that there's more oversight today with the preservatives that we eat and they are not definitely not. They're deemed to be safe by the, the people who provide that oversight. Whereas back then, when we're talking about this embalmed beef scandal, no one had any idea what, what chemicals were possibly being injected into this meat. So it was just a big free for all. So imagine what's happening here is that the meat is being processed you know the animals are being slaughtered and they're they're cutting they're cutting up the meat and they're just they're they're shipping it uh hundreds of miles to provide to the soldiers so it's it's and it's obvious especially given you know the the technology and the things that they had at that time that that is that doesn't quite make sense that the food would still be good after it's been processed and then shipped hundreds of miles to the soldiers. Now, I have another primary source. This is actually a part of an interview with a soldier who experienced this firsthand. And I'm just going to read to you what he said. Now, here's what he said about the rations. He said, we had nothing to eat but corned beef and hard tack and not enough of that. Now, hard tack is like a dehumidified biscuit. OK, that, that can it can stand for a long period of time. When asked about his experience with embalmed beef, he said, yes, experience enough to satisfy us all. We called it embalmed beef. And while I do not know much about chemicals, it was evident to me that the beef had been prepared and preserved by some chemical preparation, which produced illness among the men. Now you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if the soldiers could sense the presence of the chemicals, it had to have been really, really bad. Let's continue with this interview from a private Charles Knott. He said, 
Well, we were furnished with rotten meat from the beginning of our service until the end. It was issued to us at Jacksonville, Florida, and the boys simply could not eat it. If hunger forced them to swallow a little of it, digestive disorders and serious illness followed. At one time in Jacksonville, out of our company of 106 men, only 18 could be counted for duty, and two of them were walking skeletons. During that time, three men died in one week, and I was positive at the time, and am yet, that the, the debility which pervaded the regiment was due to the fact that the food was coarse and of poor quality, and that the meat contained acids or preparations which poisoned the system. Now this private would also go on to say that he did tell his superior officers and people were told by the superior officers if they complain anymore then they would be punished and so that quickly shut down a lot of complaints from the soldiers and that particular person he also said that the commanding officers and superiors they got food from a different source which was interesting let me share with you his observations when he saw the, the meat being cooked. So he said, the meat was usually boiled, a thick scum would form over it, and it would be necessary to skim this off two or three times during the time the meat was cooking. Both scum and meat had a disagreeable and nauseating odor. So you're probably wondering what the leaders in the army were thinking, what they saw, why didn't they speak up? Well, I have some actual testimony from the officers and here's some of the things that they reported to this commission. One major said, I heard no complaint of the canned roast beef. Another officer said, the beef when not cooked was unpalatable but as an occasional substitute for bacon, it was acceptable. Now here's a Lieutenant Davis, and he considered the beef of poor quality and said he had found four maggots cooked with the beef in the cans. Here's another Lieutenant, he said it was a distinct failure. Here's a Major Jackson, he said that the quality of the beef used in the can, canning was poor. It had served very well in hashes, but as a separate article of food, it was nauseating. Here's a Captain West, and he said the men did not eat much of the canned beef, complaining of nauseating, nausea, nausea afterwards. He himself had preferred going without meat to eating it. And a, a Lieutenant Paddock, he would back up the same thing. He would say that men would go hungry rather than eating it. Now, throughout the testimony in this commission, sparks did fly because we had one general, a General Miles, who claimed that, yes, I know that th this meat has been tampered with. It's been embalmed and it's making people sick. And I've got all of this evidence. And then you had another general, General Egan, he was in charge of this overall process and furnishing the food to the army. And he called uh, General Miles, among other things, he called him a liar and he used some other colorful language that eventually led to him being court-martialed. The, the, the president actually called for him to be court-martialed for some of the things that he said about, for, about General Miles. So it was clear that something was going on with this meat. Something wasn't quite right with the meat. Everyone, everyone realized it. There, were, there was numerous testimony about it. But in the end, the Dodge Commission is going to issue its report and they're going to state that, yes, there was spoiled meat, but there wasn't anything nefarious behind it. It wasn't embalmed or anything like that. It was just spoiled simply because it wasn't handled properly. For example, there was testimony that meat was taken off a ship in Puerto Rico and it, was, it sat on the dock under the sun for a very, very long time and that meat was, would eventually be served to the soldiers and, and so it was determined that because of the poor handling, that's why the meat was spoiled. And so really no one, 
Noah was held to account for the poor quality of the meat. And a lot of people were disappointed by the finding of this commission. A lot of people didn't agree with it, especially the, the media. The media, they, they held on to the they held on to the fact that something didn't seem right with this situation and and they were very disappointed that no one was punished for this and i found an article in the early part of 1906 that was actually talking about the 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 com, the dodge commission and, and their report and they were refuting it and remember 1906 that's the year that the jungle is going to cause up uh, cause a whole lot of stir and people are going to really start looking at the meat packing industry and then eventually that oversight in the meat packing industry is going to come so that is just a short uh, a short uh, account of the embalmed beef scandal there is so much more that goes in it you can actually check out in the link section you can check out and read for yourself the dodge commission report additionally i've got a few more resources for you to check out if you want to learn more i will make a worksheet available for you as well so you can further your knowledge of the embalmed beef scandal and as always as always i thank you so much for watching and until we meet again please keep chasing the vision bye